As a graduate student, I was studying an evolutionary question, and I stumbled into a medical question that turned into a huge hall of mirrors. The upshot is what I was studying was uh, this thing called a telomere, which is a genetic sequence, a repetitive genetic sequence at the ends of chromosomes. And the length of this sequence appears to dictate how many times a cell can reproduce. If you do cellular damage or you need to do regular maintenance, your cells have to be replaced. And so the length of this telomere dictates how much replacement you get. And therefore, it dictates how what your <clears throat> maximum longevity is going to be because basically you've got a pool of cells for replacement. And when they're exhausted, you suffer the, uh, the consequences of aging. So why would selection have built in a limit like that? The reason, it turns out, uh, and this was uh, my contribution in one of my dissertation chapters, is that if you don't have that limit, then lots and lots of cells in your lifetime get damaged in such a way that they keep reproducing and don't stop and they become tumors, which become cancers, which kill you. So in order to avoid that fate, a limit has been built in to the cellular replication of all uh, or almost all cell lines. So just just to just to tagline it, right? Like you've identified a fundamental trade-off between senescence, which is to say aging-ish, and cancer. That you try to beat one and you're stuck with the other, and there is no way to escape that trade-off. Yeah, and or another way to put it is your capacity to do repair and your capacity to avoid cancer are in tension with each other. And so mm -hmm. what selection has done is nicely balanced this and given us a very long life. But if you move in one direction, it comes at a cost to the other. So... In so any what case, does this have to do with what does this have to do right. with this? So what I found out was that basically the reason that people hadn't figured that out was that there was one result which made no sense and seemed to suggest that that model was wrong, which we now know it isn't. But at the time, it seemed like that model had to be wrong because mice had ultra long telomeres and very short lives. And that didn't seem consistent because they should have the ability to repair their tissues for a very long time, given that their telomeres are even much longer than a, a human's. Now, it turns that out... That is to say, you should expect with long telomeres that their lives would be longer. Yes, although I... I, I, I believe, I'm just translating what you just said. Is that not yes. what you meant? Okay. And in yeah. fact, in some ways, this is true. Their lives aren't longer. But their capacity to deal with damage is better by a lot. The reason that their lives aren't longer is because we have basically turned off their cancer protection, and so they all get cancer and they all die early. Not all mice. No. <laughs> not no. all mice. Oh God. Um, not all mice. But but you're specifically talking about like we, we didn't expect to be going down no, here, but we I didn't. think it's necessary. Um, you're specifically talking about lab mice. So this isn't wild mice. Wild right. mice do have. Um, short lives. But in the literature, what you found was, well, mice have long telomeres. And part of what you said was, I wonder if, in fact, all mice or if this is, in fact, a lab artifact. Right. right? So, and, and, and here you go. So I made a prediction, which was actually, if you test wild mice, you will find that they have short telomeres, which, in fact, turns out to be true. So that was a, a, a coup there that I was able to predict that without laboratories or mice. <laughs> um, but anyway, that turned out to be accurate. The mystery from the point of view of the field um, was why are the telomeres getting elongated? And what I think the field has still not understood and certainly not owned up to is that it's the breeding protocol. So initially when this was discovered, those few people who paid attention to it thought it was going to be the inbreeding, that inbreeding somehow elongates telomeres, which it doesn't. Right. Nor is there any reason it should. It creates problems for sure, but sure. it's not that one. It creates yeah. um, mentally retarded mice who have other pathologies. Not but, all mice, bro. <laughs> but um, it doesn't elongate telomeres. What does elongate telomeres is breeding only young animals. So this is the only hypothesis left standing, as far as I know, for the elongation of telomeres. It's mine. And the hypothesis is... By which you mean all the other hypotheses for the long telomeres have been falsified. Have been falsified, yes. right. Um, so I would say that this one has the presumption of truth. Uh, and there are some evidence. We won't go into it. But um, in any case, the point is when you breed only young animals because you're interested in your financial bottom line and you want to turn uh, mouse chow into mice at the highest possible rate, so your profit is the greatest at the end of the day, you breed these young animals. You're breeding animals who are too young to have died of cancer. So therefore, the penalty for being very prone to cancer is zero or close to it in evolutionary terms. Whereas 
the advantage, evolutionary advantage in these breeding colonies to animals that ratchet up and keep at a high level their reproductive rate early in life is extreme. And so the point is you're now selecting for mice that breed at an incredibly high rate, right? Um, and you're not selecting that they maintain their cancer protection. And what you do is you end up creating a species that's hyper prone to cancer and hyper capable of repairing its tissues, which I argued, and my paper was published in 2002, I argued was a major danger because we use these animals in pharmaceutical testing, right? It's our first line of defense. And the point is an animal that is hyper capable of replacing damaged tissue will not show toxicity that would be very, very bad for people. So just to say that again, um, and you've said it very clearly, but it was never the intention of the people who were breeding the mice for profit to sell to research labs. Uh, to create mice um, that had the capacity, uh, a greater than usual capacity to repair tissue. <clears throat> that would have been um, actually criminal, right? <clears throat> um, they, that was not the intention so far as we know, and no one has ever suggested that it was. Um, that ability of the lab mice to repair um, tissue at such a higher rate than other organisms do was an unexpected consequence and indeed an unrecognized consequence until you came along of the breeding protocol that was simply an economic uh, decision. Right. And the problem is there is the implication that this uh, elongation of telomeres has actually created a phenomenon where we think drugs are safe, we release them, and then we discover that they do damage. Now, of course, the damage that we see most critically is in the heart. We see people have heart failure who shouldn't, and then we start looking and we discover some drug like Vioxx has damaged their heart. Probably it's damage across the entire body, but the nature of the heart is A, it doesn't have much capacity for self-repair, so it's very vulnerable. We could talk about why that is or not, but um, anyway, there's that. And also, failures of the heart are utterly conspicuous so we notice them so mm -hmm. we you know we think this yeah. is a heart damage but it's it's a more general kind of damage